Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyemi Zvachem Nun Vav. We begin on Nun Hey Yom Bez, uh, two lines off the bottom. So as we learned the other day, there is a mitzvah to send away anybody who uh, who is tummy outside, uh, you know, out of the Reis Migdash. In some cases, out of Harabayis, outside Yerushalayim, if, if it's a mitzvah, extreme case. So there's a mitzvah I say to send them out. And the tummy is forbidden from entering territory which is uh, meant to be off limits for him. So depending on the degree of tumor, that's how far you, you stay from the actual Beis Hamidosh. Right? There are three territories, so to speak. We have the actual um, machne. So in the Midbar, it was divided into three machne shechina, the actual uh, you know, mishkan uh, you know, and, and the courtyard around it. That was the highest level. Then we have the Machna Levia, where the Levim encamped around the uh, around the Mishkan. That's level two. And level three is Machna Yisro, where the general public uh, camped. A Mitzvah is meant to be sent beyond all three. A Zav beyond beyond two. A Tamei Mace beyond just one. Correspondingly, in the Beis Hamikdash, we also have three areas, three territories, three levels of uh, of kedusha. Yerushalayim was the Machna Yisroel, Machna Levia. In this case, corresponded to the Har Habayis and um, the Ezra's Noshim, but beyond Ezra's Noshim, which means uh, the uh, interior part of Beis Hamidosh, which was called the Azora, where the you know the uh, Mizbeach Achitzim was situated, the Azora. But in this uh, in this sense, the Azora now encompasses all the uh, structures within it as well. So that's the Heichal, the Kodesh uh, the area behind Kodesh Hakadoshim within this general broad enclosure called the Azara, which was actually 187 uh, Amis long by 135. That was considered the Azara domain, right? And within it we had the Heichal, the Kadashim, and the Ulam. So only regarding that area uh, is one liable to the highest penalty, Kuris. Or on the flip side, if it's a Beshege, there's a Chatas, that only applies so although there's a law, there's an assay regarding all the uh, areas, you know, to its, each respective uh, level of, of tumma, which doesn't belong there. But in terms of kares, the ultimate penalty, the ultimate einish, that would only apply if a tummy actually enters the azara domain. Amar bi mashmol in chayav mishin tumma. One is only chayav kares on account of entering when he is tummy. That only applies to area A, to the machne shechina. Anything within the Azara enclosure. El al Oirech, the Azara, which is how long? 187 Amma, Meyo Shmoyne by 135 Amma in the width. Al Oirech of Meya, Ushlash Mohammesh. And Rashi explains as opposed to if one enters the Lishkais, these uh, chambers which were sort of built next to the Azara, sort of annexed to the Azara. Next to the Azara, but you know, just open to it. It's not inside, but the entry was. Uh, open to the Azara. Rashi says they were not sanctified on the same level as the Azara. You need a whole you know, process to expand the Azara. You need the uh, Urim Vitumim and all that. So these uh, chambers were not included in the actual Kedusha of the Azara, in which case if a person enters those areas, it's not considered as though he entered the Azara. In fact, Tony Tanaka made the Rav Nachman. There was a, a Chacham, presented a Brisa likewise to Rav Nachman, saying the same. Kol Azara. Kuf al Kuf The Azara domain encompassed an area of 187 by 135. Amar Lei. Rav Nachman responded to him. Hachi Amar Lei Abba. In fact, my father told me. Ki So specifically in this area. It's unique with respect to several halachas. Kaihanim nechnasim l'sham bo'ech l'sham kadosh kachin. Kaihanim can enter this area for kadosh kadoshim consumption, which is only available in this area. V'shech l'sham kachim kalim, right? You can shech kachim kalim in this area as well. Chayav l'sham tuma, and one is liable on account of entering when he's tummy. So that applies only to this area. Says the Gemara. Okay, limutei mai. We're saying, um, you know, 
a tummy is only liable on account of this area, as opposed to which areas? What are you excluding? Perhaps you're trying to exclude the um, windows in the uh, walls of the, of the Azara. So what about the actual window space itself? Or dalsis, the doorways, or the um, thickness uh, of the wall itself, meaning let's say you're right on top of the wall surrounding the Azara. Is that excluded? Tanina. We have a, a Braisa. That they are included in the Kedusha of the Azor. Ha We assume the doorways as well. Kilofnim. They have the him Kedusha as the interior. So how could you exclude that? Velo. Rather, Shmuel must be excluding those chambers, those rooms built alongside the Azor. Technically, they're situated outside. They're just open to the inside. Lemute, Lishachais. And therefore, they don't have the same kedusha as the Azara. Now, if they're built outside the Azara, just open to the inside, are you telling me that the tummy enters there? He's not chayev, but it's not teichan kodesh. Have a mishnah mesechas master sheni that actually the inside of those chambers teichan kodesh have kedusha like the Azara. It says the Gemara with Rabbanon. It's only with Rabbanon. They forbade a tummy to enter those areas lest he you know walk into the Azara. But technically, when atayra, it's not so. The raisa lie really when atayra. These rooms have no kedusha of the Azara. Vatanya, we have a, a brisa. Lishka is benuyas b'chayl. Psichas hakodesh, right? These very uh, chambers that were built outside, open to the inside, they're fully considered like the Azara. Menayin shakihanim and chasim l'sham. How do we know that kehanim could enter those rooms and have their meals? Kach kedashim, which are meant to be in the Azara. Vayich l'sham kedusha kedashim. Shiurei mincha. They could have the kach kedashim and leftovers of the mincha, even in those side chambers. Tamalayim of pasuk. It's perfectly fine. Bachatzar or El Moedich Lor. Pasuk speaks about Malkim Kaddish, the actual holy place, and the Chatzar and the outskirts, the outlying, you know, areas. So we learn. Ha Toyra Ribsa Chatzeres Harbe Eitz Lachila Achas. So this one Achila, meaning consumption of Kachik Kedoshim, can be eaten anywhere, either in the Azara or even next to the Azara in those rooms. And you're telling me those rooms will not. Treat it like the Azor. Well, says the Gemara, really, uh, it's a... Amrav al Really, regarding Tuma, no, they're not treated like the Azor. It's only with respect to um, consumption of carbonis. So regarding Halach of Tuma, they're out. Regarding... Um, Shechting the karbanis, they're out. Regarding the third halacha, vachilas karbanis, <coughs> on that the Torah considers them like the Azara. Special pasach, as long as they're you know, close enough, they're considered like the chatzar of the uh, Mokim Kaddish. Okay, it says, Ma'avilinian tumaloi, but regarding tumah, it's not considered. Tanya, we have a rice. Lishkes abnu yispachel, the Kaddish, right? Our chambers that are built on the outskirts but open to the inside. So the Kayana can enter there and consume their carbonis. But you can't do shita of uh, even Kachim Kalam, which need the Azara. Why? Because, as we learned uh, yesterday, it says by the shita of Kachim Kalam has to be in full view of the past, it has to be in front of the you know, Pesach of the Heichal, and we excluded, right? Yesterday we excluded these chambers from Shechit of Kachim Kalm. So that's out. Now listen to this. The Chayovin Mishum Tumah. If a Kayin enters those areas, not a Kayin, a Tomei, enters those areas, he's Chayev for entering the Tumah. So clearly, the Kares and the, you know, carbon, if it's based on Shechit, applies to these rooms as well. You're telling me they're out? They're considered... Uh, Beyond the Azara, and not uh, treated as uh, as the uh, as, as Azara. Well, says the Gemara. Must apparently there must be a, an error in the in the Brisa. It has to be revised. Lav Amris ein Shaykhten, because just as you told me in the Brisa that those rooms are not suitable for Shchit of Kachim Kalm, apparently they're uh, considered out of the area. Tninami and Chayav and revise the next halach as well. There's no Chiv of Tum instead of Yes Chiv. There's no Chiv. Because their kedusha is only made the as we explained, and that fits very well with Shmuel, that these lishkos are excluded. 
Well, says the Gemara, how could you compare their exclusion regarding Shechita to also exclude them regarding Tumah? I can fully understand that for Shechita they're not suitable because, uh, like we said, they're not opposite the doorway to the Hechel, they're considered a separate area. I understand you can't do Shechita there. Because that requires full direct view has to be in front of the Pesach of the Oichel of the Oil Moid. You don't have it because it's considered a separate area. But why would you say there's no liability of Tuma? Am I? Why? How could you compare one to the other? If they're open to the Hechel, they're serving the Hechel, they're part of the, the uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Azara. Well, says the Gemara, let's turn around the question to you. You're telling me that uh, you can't do Shechita there? Why? Why? Because they're out, of, they're out of the area? Because you're lacking in Pesach Oyel Moed? Who says? Maybe you're uh, in full view of the Pesach Oyel Moed. Yeah, it could be a side room, but the door's open. You can be facing the Pesach Oyel Moed, direct view, uninterrupted view. Perhaps we're speaking. Who said we're not speaking when it's directly the Ika? Shechita Kengada Pesach, that the Shechita is taking place, you know, directly. In full view of the, of the Pesach. The elective, because otherwise, if it's not so, my Israch, why do we need a Pesach to exclude it? Sorry, why does the bribes have to exclude it? We all know that Pesach Oil made is a prerequisite, is a requirement. Apparently, we're speaking that it has that quality, has that component of directness. And still, it's excluded. Ella, so it must be. Even though the shul is taking place, Kenegra Pesach. Today we still learn in the Braisa that it doesn't qualify. It's not suitable for Shechita. Ain't Shechitin. Not because it's lacking in directness. Rather, because Mishun Lake Kaddish. Because uh, that, that area is not Kaddish. Like the Azar. Tani so likewise. With respect to the next halach of Tumo. It makes very well sense that the Bible would say, Ain't chayyab, there's no Chiyav Mishim Tumah because it doesn't have the same Kedush as the Azara. Okay, so uh, the Bible very well could be uh, in line with Shmuel. Again, so the Azara itself is considered regarding Tumah, regarding Achilles. Uh, regarding of regarding the outlying rooms adjacent to the Azara, even though they're open to the Azara. According to this, we conclude that it's only Kaddish from the Rabbana, but when I tell you, it's not regarded like the Azara, not regarding Tuma, not regarding Shechita uh, of, uh, of Kachim Kalim, etc. Says the Gemara. But regarding Achila, we allow Achila of Kachim in those rooms. Ask the Gemara, Ola Achila Inan? Can I get a Pesach? So regarding eating Kaddish HaKadosh, that doesn't need to be done opposite the doorway of the Hechel, which those rooms don't have, which those rooms are not considered. But Tani, we have a Brisa. So we discussed this yesterday, the, um, the, the Hechel area, the front of the Hechel, which was the Ulam, the structure of the ulam would extend past the walls of the hechel. So if you're going from, uh, you know, west to, to from east to west facing the hechel, right? If take a quick look at the uh, diagram over here, the nunheim at base towards the bottom, and, and the rashi on the left. So if you're facing the ulam and hechel configuration, looks like a upside down T, right? So the right and the left of that protrusion, those are called the base of halifas. Um, and there were these little access doors, one on either side, to provide exposure to the Azura on that side, which would now be, now be considered um, open to the Ulam, open to the Hechel, through those you know, doorways. What was the purpose of those access doors? So those uh, protrusions were called Beis HaKhalifas, which featured these two doors. What for? in order to enable the azara regarding shechita of karbanis and also eating consumption of kadosh kadosh, which takes place in the azara only. Apparently, 
just as for shkit of kachim kalim, pesach oil moed is required. Lefnei oil moed is required. You have to have directness to the oil moed. Today, likewise, for consumption of kachim kalim, for uh, of kachim kadosh. And here we're saying that. Um, Now regarding Kodshik Hashem, you can have them even in the side chambers. Right? Eating is different. That doesn't need to be in the actual Azara proper. It can be on the outlying areas, in the adjacent rooms, as long as they're open to the Azara. Um, Ravina Sami Mekan Achila. No, you don't need. Don't, don't uh, mention Achila in this, uh, this Halach. Right? So the Pishpashim, these doorways, were not meant to enable Achila in those areas. Achila doesn't need directness to the oil mayed, as we learned before. Even if you're in the Chatzar, even if you're in the uh, you know, surrounding areas, like those uh, rooms built alongside the Azara, which are open to the Azara, that's also fine for Achila of Kach, not for Tuma, not for Shechita of Kachim Kalam. For those who need the actual Azara proper, but for eating, we had a pasuk, right? Bachatzar oil moed yechlu. You could even eat it in the chatzar, in the courtyard, so to speak, in the outlying adjacent areas. Ask the Gemara, how could you say that for achila? You don't have to be lefnei oil moed. But ksiv, we have the uh, pasuk regarding describing the way they consume the um, they meant to consume the uh, the bus or the flesh of the karbanis during the miluim when they inaugurated the mishkan. It says clearly, you have to do it pesach oil moed. Right, Moshe tells Aaron, right? Bashto Sabasar Pesach Oyal Mayed. Visham Tahu Oysa eat it right there at the Pesach Oyal Mayed. Well, Kachi Shah Shani, that was an exceptional case. One time event. During the Miluim only, it was required to consume the Karbanais at the Pesach Oyal Mayed. But otherwise, throughout the generations, even Kachi Kadash need not be in the actual Azura. You can even have them in the uh, adjacent rooms, as we explained. Okay, so in summation. The actual primary Azora proper encompassed 187 by 135 Amma. Okay, so only that area qualifies regarding the Chiv Kharis slash Khatas of entering when one is tummy. Only that area qualifies for Shkita of Kachim Kalim regarding Achil of Kachim Kachim. Even the Lishka is the chambers alongside the Azora, which were open to the Azora. Since they're considered Chatzar oil Moed, they qualify as well. Amar Ritzabar Dimi. So the blood of the carbon, if it was left out past sunset, the shechta today, right? Shechta the carbon today, and we have the dam sitting out, was not yet tended to, was not yet applied on the mizbech. It's past shkia. What happens? It's puzzle. Shana the pasuk says, as if We learn b'yoyim shatay zeveach. Make sure to do the Yakrova, to do the apl- application of the Dhamma and the Mizbech on the day of Shkita, but not on the, uh, not during the time that you can't do Zvicha, meaning after Shkia where you can't, uh, it's, it's, it's no longer the Yom HaZvicha. The day of Shkita is over. Yato Makrov, you can no, can no longer process the blood. So actually, we have three sort of expiry dates regarding various components of a carbon. So let's say, you know, today is Sunday. Do the Shkita of the carbon today. This Rika must be performed before Shkia. Past Shkia, that's it. Expired. Regarding the Emurim, the uh, fats, etc. That, you have until overnight until the morning. Regarding the Basar of the carbon, in some cases, it also expires, you know, by the next morning. In other cases, like Ishlamim, we have today, Sunday, Sunday night, until Monday. At sunset, so it's day, night, and day. But regarding the dam, in all cases, it expires tonight at sunset. Ask the Gemara, how could you learn from this pasuk? How this pasuk needs for something else? The gofei, because the pasuk there is teaching us a very basic fact: the laws of the uh, shlamim time frame. How long do you eat the bus of the shlamim? Right? You eat the uh, the carbon today. Right, b'yayim akriva. Sorry, b'yayim akriva is zivcha yachel. 
or in Mokras. Right? Eat the carbon today, the day of Zvicha Sunday, and tomorrow, Monday. When I say Menu, right? So, so uh, it's not an extra pasuk. <laughs> it's simply coming here to tell us how long uh, one may, uh, what, the, you know, the, the time frame of the uh, consumption of Islam. How could you learn the Allah of the Dam becoming puzzle? It's needed to go faith for its own sake, in Cain, because if it's only for that, name a the pasuk would word itself differently. Instead of saying, Biyayim HaKrivoy as Zivchoy, they would just say, Biyayim Zivchoy Yeachal. Right? Imkei Nehme Kro Biyayim Zivchoy Yeachal. You eat it on the day of Zvicha, or we mark us on the following day. Why add the word HaKrivoy? HaKrivoy is, 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 uh, is a reference to the HaKrava, right? the processing, the application of the blood. HaKrivoy, the word HaKrivoy, what's that for? Shemamana apparently is coming to teach, teach us this halacha as well. Aside from teaching us the basic halacha, the time frame of the shlamim consumption, it's also teaching us bayem shatav zeveya, chatav makriv. The day of the zivcha, of the shechita. That's when you do the hakrava, that's when you have to process the blood, but once you wait past, you know, sunset, it's, it's, it's too late. Bayem shiyatav zeveya, but once it's past, it's zvicha. Once it's past, the day of Zvich, Yatu Makrib, you can no longer be Makrib the Dam. Well, says the one who says, perhaps, you have a choice. Perhaps the Pasuk is teaching us like this. You have two options in terms of starting the clock. Ikariv, Dama Idna, Nesachal Basar Idna, Ula Machar. It's a Shlaman. It can be eaten for two days. When do you start the clock? Well, it depends on when the uh, Hakrova happened, when the uh, Zrika happened. If you did the Zrika today, Sunday, so the clock starts today, and you have today, tonight, and tomorrow to eat the, the Shlam. If you waited until uh, tomorrow to do the Zrika, okay, the clock starts tomorrow. So you have Monday, Monday night, and Tuesday. Maybe that's what the Pasuk means to say. Not to say that Dam becomes Pasal Bashkiya Sacham, it's too late to do anything. Perhaps, with Dilma, come Rahman, Ikarev Dama Idna, if you did the Zrika today on the day of Shechita, which is Sunday, then you have uh, from today, Nesach al Basar Idna, the Basar should be eaten consumed today, Lamachar and tomorrow. Ikar Dam Lamachar. If you chose to do the Zrika tomorrow on Monday, Nesach al Basar Lamachar, Luyam Ochar, then you start tomorrow, you eat tomorrow, and then the following day on Tuesday. Perhaps that's the point of the Pasuk. Again, says the more it's impossible, it came because if that were so named, the Pasuk would word itself differently. It would leave out the word Zivchay. It would just say, You eat it on the day of Akrava, Krava, and the following day. The word Zivchay, what's that for? Zvicha is describing the act of Shechita. Lomali, what's that point? Shemaman, apparently, it's to tie them together. The day of Zvicha is what starts the clock. Shechita was today, you gotta start today. You can only be Makrav on the day of Zvicha Sunday, but not tomorrow, not tonight, it's too late. Bayam Shiyata Zeveach. If it's past the day of Zvicha, you can no longer be Makrav the Dam. Okay, having said that, so we all know that a Shlamim extends uh, for two days, right? You can eat the Basra today, Sunday, Sunday night, and Monday. Until Monday, end of day. But if we look in the Psukim, yeah, you can only eat it until tomorrow night, but the Allah of Sreifas nicer leftover material that needs to be burnt, that only happens the following morning. You burn only Tuesday morning. So between Monday night and Tuesday morning, the buster is off limits for consumption. It's sort of in limbo. You can no longer eat it, but you know, actually being labeled as nicer leftovers, which necessitates burning, that only happens the next morning. Now let's shift to Pigle, right? So Pigle entails a kain who's expressing his intention to uh, consume the, the buster past its allowable time. Okay, so today is Sunday, he's doing the Shechita, Almanaz, thinking and saying, I'm going to have the Basar or feed the Basar to somebody on, you know, past Monday night. I past sunset on Monday. So sometime between Monday night and Tuesday morning. Is that considered Pigel? Now certainly if you would have a mind to feed it on Tuesday, that's beyond, certainly beyond, then that's Pigel. If he has a mind to feed it on Monday, that's still within the allowable time, that's perfectly fine. What about in between, during that limbo period, Itma, we have learned. In the base of Midrash, if he's having a mind to feed the basra, to eat the basra, the night of Tuesday, 
the night of the third day. Is it pigal or not? It's beyond the allowable time, but it's not yet. Technically, full-fledged noisa, which only happens the next morning. The carbon is still okay. It's not chutzah's manoi. There's no pigal. Rabbi Yechon, our apostle, Rabbi Yechon says apostle. It's considered like having a machshav of pigal. He says it's fine. Totally into the strip. It's not yet been totally disconnected and designated for burning. It's not truly nicer. Rabbi Yechon, our apostle, he says this apostle, it can no longer be eaten at that point. Certainly qualifies for chutzah's manoi, and it becomes pigal. We have another machlokes, similar machlokes in the same realm. So, in fact, if a person decides to eat the basar of Eshlamim on that night of the third day, so it was a per- perfect carbon. There was no pigle. There was no uh, no inferior thoughts during the actual hakrava. It was perfectly fine. But now there's some basar left over. It's Monday night, midnight. The person eats it at that point. Has he eaten? Noiser, in which case he's liable to curries, or do we say it's not yet officially noiser? Same achlaikas. Hayochal or shlishi, chizki amar, potter is exempt. It's not yet been fully designated as um, as noiser. Leintik l'streif hasn't been yet, you know, totally disconnected from from the eating to the burning, so to speak. It hasn't yet entered the burning domain. It's not really considered noiser. But Rabbi Yechon Amar, yeah, he's chayev. Why do it chilim achila? It's been disqualified for consumption. We mean to say that it's already it's already nicer. It's leftovers. We have a riot to Rabbi Yechon from a brisa. Tanya goes to Rabbi Yechon. So those carbonates that can only be eaten for one day, like a carbon toida, you can only have them today on Sunday into tonight. But so regarding the machshav of pigel, right? So what constitutes beyond its time? Well, like we said, each comp- you know, it's, it's relative per component. Some things have, uh, you know, a deadline of, of, of tonight, uh, sunset, that's the, the blood, and some can last until the next morning, the basra, right? depending on what you're thinking about. Mechash from Bedomen, so Machshaber with respect to the blood of that carbon, uh, the deadline for that is tonight. Sunset is considered the end, uh, the end time for that. However, Uvipsar and Ubemurin, they're flesh and they murim, you have until the next morning. Shalom and Ashachar. Right? Regarding two day carbonists like Shlamims, Kachim and Achalm Shlam of Laila Echad, those that are eaten for two days and a night, like the Shlamim, Bachar, Master Behemoth. So, what consider, what's considered out of bounds regarding a Machshava? Again, it depends what he's thinking about. Machash from Bedom. So, if he's thinking about the Dam, the deadline for that is uh, sunset. Shetishka Chamo, Bemurayan, regarding the Murin, you have until the next morning, Shalom, Mulla Shach, until uh, sunrise, until, uh, you know, uh, Adon. Ubib Saran, however, when it comes to the Basar, okay, here's the uh, critical point. So, it's a Shlamim. Shechita was today, Sunday. You can eat the Basar today, tonight, and tomorrow, up until tomorrow night. But true Noiser only happens, you know, the Achiv of Bernie only happens the next morning, Tuesday. Says the Brisa, what's considered out of bounds? Past sunset of that second day. That's exactly like Rabbi Eichna. If he plans on eating it, past Monday night. Past Monday night sunset. So throughout that Monday night, it's already considered noiser. And having that plan in mind, in fact, makes the carbon uh, a pigle. Okay, so it works hand in hand. Just as if it's consumed at that point, it's considered consuming nicer, because it's past its expiry date. So likewise, if he, uh, if he has that in mind, he has that intention in mind while he's processing the carbon originally on Sunday, that too is const- constitutes a uh, akrova of pigol. Exactly like Rabbi Echna. Continues the Gemara, Tan Rabbanon. Back to the uh, time frame of, a, of a shlamim, Two days and a night. So, so we assume, we bring the carbon today, let's say uh, today is Sunday, you have today, tonight, and tomorrow. Until tomorrow, sunset. And the question is why? Why not give you till the next morning? You know, just as a one-day carbon has today and tonight, so the night always follows the day. Likewise, a two-day carbon, like a shlamim. You should get two days and two nights that follow those days. You should have until Tuesday morning. 
Tanur Abbanon. Yochel, perhaps, yeah. You nechol. Le'oyr shalishi, perhaps. In, in fact, you can consume that shlamim even during that night prior to Tuesday. Because that's the, uh, the night that, that follows the Monday, the second day. Vidinu. And it's simply, you know, logic. By comparison, let's compare the two types of karbonis, the two day ones to the one day ones. Zvachim, Vidinu, Zvachim, Necholim, Yamech. There are some karbonis which have a one day time frame. Uzvachim, Necholim, Lishna Yam. There are those that have a two day time frame. Let's compare. Mazvachim, Necholim. Huyaymecha, just as the single day karbonis. What happens to the night? The night follows the day. It's a single unit. Day and then the night. Laila, Achare, the night follows the day. And is included in their uh, time frame. Av zavachim hanechalim lishne yamim. Likewise, the two-day karbonis, like Eishlamim, we should assume Laila Achare, the night follows the day. Sunday, Sunday night. Monday, Monday night. Tamalaymar comes to Pasuk and says, V'hanoyser ad yoyim. While it's still day. We learn that you can only have it while still day until the end of Monday. But you cannot have it during the night between Monday and Tuesday. So time's up as soon as the day is up. However, the full brunt of the uh, nicer uh, status doesn't descend on that material until the next morning when you're meant to burn it. Perhaps you burn it right away. As soon as you finish eating, you burn just as by the uh, short you know, time frame carbonates, the one-day carbonates, which are burnt as soon as you're done eating. Right? You have it today and tonight. Then uh, you go immediately burn it. Likewise, let's assume the burning by the two-day carbon occurs as soon as you're done eating, which is Monday night. Don't have to wait till Tuesday morning. Vidinu. Again, let's make that comparison. Zvachim nechalan liyay mechad. You have one day karbonis. Uzvachim nechalan lishnayam two day karbonis. Let's compare. Ma zvachim. Ha nechalan liyay mechad. Just as the one day karbon. Take af lachil as soon as you're done eating, you burn. Let's assume. Av zvachim nechalan lishnayam the two day karbonis. Likewise, take af lachil as you burn as soon as you're done eating. I.e., Monday night. Talmud Leimer comes to pasuk and says only burn it the next morning. And we learn you can only burn it come Tuesday, but not Monday night. So again, a one day carbon, you have it today and tonight, and you burn it immediately on the morning. Whereas a two day carbon is eaten today, tonight, and tomorrow until the end of tomorrow. During that night between Monday and Tuesday, it's sort of in limbo. You don't eat it, you don't burn it until the next morning comes around. Okay, so in summation, we learned that within the Azara proper itself, only there is there a full liability of Tuma entry, as opposed to the adjacent um, chambers, even those that are open to the, uh, to the Azara, but they are suitable for Achilas Kochim, even Kochi Kochim. Uh, regarding Shechitas Kachim Kalim, those are called Tzidate Stad and too far removed and not suitable for that. We learned that within a carbon there are three components, each one with its own time frame. You have the Dam, which becomes Pasal. As soon as the day of Shechita is over, you have the Murin, that are still Kasha throughout the night. And regarding the Basar, if it's a one day carbon, so likewise. But if it's a two day carbon, you have until the next evening, although the strafe only takes place the following morning. All the best to you, Natsla